The octatonic scale is the largest of the pressing scales with eight pitches as the name suggests. In this fourth episode on the pressing scales, I'll explain the structure of the octatonic scale with examples, and I'll highlight many of its subsets. I'm Jay Beard and I make videos about Scriabin and music theory. Please check out my website to check out the lessons and courses that I offer and please like, comment, and subscribe. One thing we've seen in the past two videos is simple repeating interval patterns forming symmetrical structures. The whole tone scale has the most simple pattern with an interval pattern of plus two semitones repeating. The hexatonic scale has two steps to its interval pattern, alternating between a minor third and a half step, plus three one repeating. The octatonic scale is a repeating pattern of a whole step then half step, plus two one repeating. With each of these pressing scales, the simple repetitive interval pattern gives us an interval vector with extremes in particular intervals. It's worth noting that the subsets of pressing scales resembles the supersets interval content. For example, if we know that the hexatonic scale has no whole steps or tritones and we know that the major seventh chord is a subset of the hexatonic scale, then we know that the major seventh chord has no whole steps or tritones. It wouldn't make sense for a subset to have intervals that the parent scale doesn't have. All this is to make the point that subsets resemble the parent scale's interval content. By learning the structure of each pressing scale, we're learning how each of its subsets function. The octatonic scale has a more balanced interval vector with four of each interval, except there's a huge outlier with eight minor thirds. What we can infer about the octatonic scale and its subsets is that they're rich in minor thirds and thus are often transposed by minor thirds for parsimonious voice leading. Now let's get into each subset at the whiteboard. The octatonic scale has two modes, a repeating pattern of a whole step then half step, or half step then whole step. It's the most even and symmetrical eight note set. It can only be transposed to three unique places mapping onto itself at the level of a minor third. It can be thought of as two diminished chords next to each other with a third diminished chord being the only pitches not included. Scriabin based a lot of his harmony off of subsets of the octatonic scale and sometimes used the entire scale such as in opus 74 number three. Here's an example of the entire octatonic scale being voiced as chords from my orchestral piece Self Overcoming. I'm going to go over subsets from small to large sets in this video and I'll start by briefly mentioning some of the small familiar sets within the octatonic scale such as major and minor triads, seventh chords and half diminished seven, the French sixth chord, and the diminished chord. We discussed the major minor set last episode, now let's begin with discussing 4Z15, the sharp 9 chord without a fifth. Some people call it the Jimi Hendrix chord because he popularized playing this chord on guitar. While this can be used as an evil spice to add to a 5 chord, Jimi Hendrix often used it on the tonic. This is a really interesting set that has one of every interval with some neat modes to explore. 418 is a diminished triad with a major 7th added. This chord is also like a major triad with a flat 2 and it often functions similarly to a fully diminished chord but with a little more variety in interval content. It has more minor thirds in it than any other interval which explains why I've heard it applied in gospel music being transposed by minor thirds as a passing chord. Next we have 531 which is similar to the previous set but it has all four pitches of the fully diminished 7th chord plus an extra pitch. It's probably best known as a flat 9 chord where a flat 9 is added to a dominant 7th chord creating a very dissonant pull to a resolution. There's a lot of great five note sets I'm not going to get to cover here, but the last one I'll mention is 532. It's probably the most consonant five note octatonic subset, and Scriabin uses it extensively. One classic example is in the second theme from his Sonata 6, where he simply plays up the scale in order, a mode which our ear might recognize as a subset of the blues scale. The inversion pair of that scale gives us the sharp 9 chord with a fifth. 
Scriabin uses this scale as dyads played in diatonic thirds the second time through theme 2 of Sonata 7. Now let's go through all the octatonic hexachords. 6Z13 and 6Z23 are the first six notes in a row of each mode of the octatonic scale. 613 is half step whole step in a row. And 623 is whole step half step in a row. They're used more as melodies than as harmony. 627 is one of my favorite octatonic sets, and yet I can't find many examples of it in Scriabin's music. I like to think of it as a fully diminished chord with a major 7th and 9th. Here's an example from my atonal orchestral piece where I moved to this set to represent evil taking over. 630 is a special set that's nicknamed the Petrushka chord from Stravinsky's ballet. We might think of it having a C and F sharp major triad played together. Or as a 7 chord with a flat 9 and a sharp 11. It's very symmetrical as it's like the full octatonic scale with a tritone removed from it. It's oddly the only set in 12-tone equal temperament to have transpositional symmetry, meaning it maps onto itself when transposed to tritone, and yet it has a unique inversion pair. Its symmetry can make it hard to implement as it's quite dissonant, but Scriabin uses it as the final chord in Opus 67, number 1. Z49 is Scriabin's octatonic hexachord, which he uses in his music almost as much as the mystic chord. Scriabin likes to use the mode where it's voiced as a flat 9 sharp 11 13 chord, or as a sharp 9 sharp 11 chord. I talk about this set more in depth in my video on Scriabin's use of the octatonic scale, and here's an example of Scriabin using this third mode which is just like the mystic chord with a lowered second scale degree at the end of 74-3. 6C50 seems to have a lot of potential for application. Scriabin tends to use a voicing we might call a minor 7, flat 9, sharp 11. Here's an example of Scriabin using this set in measure 2 of 74-3. Lastly, there's 731, which very much resembles the full octatonic scale, just with one pitch missing. Lots of pitches means lots of subsets. The octatonic scale is symmetrical like the last two pressing scales we covered, but since it has so many subsets that aren't symmetrical, the octatonic subsets aren't just limited to being used as passing chords. Composers like Scriabin and many others have made entire compositions that revolve around this set. Once your ears adjust to a bit of dissonance, music based on the octatonic scale has a nice bite to it that sounds invigorating and dramatically evil. What's your favorite subset of the octatonic scale? Check out my website to find out more about the pitch circles and the set sheet music used to make these videos. Join the Discord and please like, comment, and subscribe.